The Cumbrian Bogs Life Project has started the restoration of three lowland raised bogs in the county. It has been working on restoring 608 hectares of this damaged habitat at Roudsey Woods and Mosses, the South Solway Mosses and Bolton Fell Moss. The bogs had been drained and then further damaged through becoming overgrown with invasive species such as rhododendron and becoming overgrown with woodland and scrub. We have been using a variety of techniques to deal with these issues. In order to access the bogs, specialist low ground pressure machinery is used. In the most dried out areas, wide tracked vehicles are able to work on top of the bog surface. Our Roudsey Wood site in particular has a significant problem with rhododendron species reaching heights of 20 to 30 feet. Invasive species such as rhododendron colonise peat bogs which have been drained and dried out. This can cause further drying by intercepting rainfall so it does not reach the bog surface and by taking up bog water through roots which is then lost through transpiration. They are removed using excavators fitted with mechanical flails. This is the most efficient means of clearing the cover and is a first step of restoration. Contractors used 8 to 10 tonne excavators fitted with circular mechanical flails. They convert their machines by extending and widening the undercarriages, allowing them to put longer and wider tracks on. These excavators mulch down the areas of dense rhododendron. Going just below ground surface is important and necessary for the restoration technique as rhododendron is difficult to kill. It is necessary to re-wet the peat body with a cell bunding technique immediately after flailing to drown out any potential regrowth. All flailed material is left in situ as it has no economic value. Once the peat has been re-wetted the rotting flailed arisings from rhododendron act as a nurse crop for the sphagnum to grow over. After this process though, if the rhododendron regrows, hand cutting or spraying with herbicide may be necessary. Trees and scrub also colonise peat bogs that have been drained and dried out. Where trees form dense woodlands on bogs, they need to be removed as it's operationally difficult to manoeuvre excavators to create bunded cells within them. Larger trees are felled by hand using chainsaws and wedges. Our contractors try to get as close to ground level as possible as the stumps will interfere with the machinery creating peat bunded cells later. On some sites contractors need to remove the roots of the trees entirely. Where it is commercially viable, the timber is extracted and removed from site using tracked articulated vehicles and sold to offset against the cost of felling. Smaller trees and scrub are flailed in a similar manner to rhododendron. The arisings from the flailing are again left in situ, acting as a nurse crop for sphagnum to grow over as the bogs re-wet. It is important to follow up the removal of trees and scrub with re-wetting works in order to ensure that they do not regrow. There has been a significant change in the mechanical procedures for these restoration techniques. Contractors can now do a couple of hectares a day of mulching rhododendron trees and scrub. The machines our contractors used on the bog changed in ground pressure during the course of the project. The first machines they used were around £2 force per square inch PSI, 
or 13.8 kilopascals. The machines they used at the end of the project were only 1 psi or 6.9 kilopascals of ground pressure. Keeping the ground pressure down enabled them to travel across very wet terrain with confidence. At the beginning of the project, the majority of the trees and rhododendron would have been felled by hand. The excavators our contractors brought in after the second year of the project with their specially developed and purpose-built flail heads allowed them to mulch trees up to 12 inches or 30 centimetres in diameter. This led to a significant time saving on the previously used technique.